Hey there, this is Jamie and in this video we're going to follow up on the MA3 forecast we made in the last video by calculating the mean error, the mean absolute deviation, the root mean squared error, and the absolute percentage error. These things will give us a better idea of how good of a forecast this would have been using the historical data. So you can start here just by refreshing yourself. This is the forecast that we made plotted against the actual data. Our forecast is here in column C and each period is forecasted based on the three previous periods averaged together. We have a historical forecast that extends between May 10th, I'm sorry, May of 2010 and February of, 18, February of 2018. Those are called a historical forecast because we've used our forecasting method to estimate or to project sales of houses and we can compare that to actual numbers that we know. But the true forecast is what comes next where we've estimated future values based on historic values. So the question then becomes, how good would this forecast have been at predicting total houses sold over the time period that we have. We need to calculate a few measures. The first thing that we're going to calculate is the error. That is the difference between the actual value and our forecasted value. But then we're going to calculate a few more things, and I encourage you to type these in with me. We're going to calculate the absolute error, which is the absolute value of that error term. We're going to calculate the squared error, which is the error term squared. And then we're going to calculate the absolute percentage error, which is expresses the total error as a percentage, or the absolute error as a percentage of the actual number. So we're going to start down here where we have real data. I'm actually just going to gray this out. I'm doing it, I'm graying this out because there have been more than one student who have tried to calculate the errors here because it seems like there should be something but we can't have an error unless we have both a real value of houses sold and a forecasted. So we won't be able to calculate errors for our first three periods. That's a three because it's MA3. In an MA5, it would be five periods. In an MA12, it would be a 12 period. Then down at the bottom, we have forecasted values, but we have no real values. So similarly, we can't calculate errors here we can only calculate our errors where we have both of those values. So let's start with our first error. And what we're gonna do is calculate each of these things and then drag the formula down. Then we'll calculate some summary statistics. And it's really those summary statistics that we're interested in. So let's start with the error first. The error, which is how far off our forecast was from the true value, is equal to the real value of houses sold minus what our forecast was. So that gives us 68. Our forecast was underneath the real value by 68 units, or in this case, 68,000 houses. Our absolute error is the absolute value of the error. And to calculate that, we use Excel's ABS formula. That gives us the absolute value. So I take the absolute value of 68. That gives me 68. The squared error is our error squared. Error, shift six to get the caret, then the number two. So we've squared that error. 68 squared is 4,624. And then the absolute percentage error is equal to the absolute error divided by the true number of houses sold. So this is saying that we were off by 16.1 units. I'm going to drag this down all the way and then I want to point out a couple of different examples. Okay, so in April 2010, our first error was 68. We actually underestimated 
the number of houses sold by 68 units. But in the next month, May 2010, our forecast was 379 compared to an actual number of houses sold of 280. That means that we overestimated. And so we have this negative forecast. When we take the absolute error, that tells us how far away in thousands our forecast was from the actual value, but it no longer specifies whether or not we were over or we were under. And that's going to be important in the next step. So the next thing that we do is we calculate our summary measures. I'm going to drag this over. Let me just get it lined up because that will make me happier. So we're going to calculate some summary measures. I'm going to calculate the mean error, M-E-A-N-E-R-R. -R. This number is not calculated in the textbook, but I find it very useful. We're going to calculate the mean absolute error. Then we're going to calculate the root mean squared error. And then we're going to calculate the mean absolute percentage error. You'll find these, if you're a student in my class, in your textbook in the example of the moving average forecast. All right, so now we're going to calculate these four things. And as you might have already guessed, the mean error is the average of the error. The mean absolute error is the average of all the absolute errors, and so on and so forth, except for the root mean squared error. So we'll actually we'll talk about that when we get there. So the mean error, we're going to use the average formula. If you click on the first error, error, command, shift, down arrow, it will highlight all of our errors. If we close our parentheses and hit enter, we'll see that our mean error is 5.58. Many of these large positive numbers have been offset by the large negative numbers. However, the final error is still positive, which means that on average, there's a little bit of a bias to this forecast. And in this case, the bias is that, you can see it in the picture, is that the forecast lies a little bit below the real value. And this is what happens when you forecast a trending data series using a moving average forecast. The forecast lags behind the trend. So the sales have to increase for a number of months before that forecast keeps up. And that's because it's averaging the values that happened previously. And when the data is trending upward, the values that are being included in the forecast are earlier and lower values. The mean absolute error is the average of the absolute error. And it tells us how far away we are on average from the value. So 5.58 tells us that we're underestimating, right? We're lagging behind the trend. But if we remove that, if we place these numbers in absolute value terms, we're 25,000 off, kind of plus or minus on average. The root mean squared error takes this squared error, which is not in any term that makes sense to anybody at all, unless you have a really great math brain, and we're just going to average those and take the square root so that they'll be in the same number as sales. So we're going to take square root, S-Q-R-T. We're going to take the square root of the average, A-V-E-R-A-G-E, -E, of all these numbers. Close parentheses twice. Hit enter. I'm going to format all of these as a number with two decimal places. And then the last one is how far off are we on average as a percentage? So on average, our forecast is about 5.8% off. And I'm going to give it one more decimal place.
Okay, double check my numbers, make sure that looks good. And there we go. That is how we calculate our errors. I encourage you to do the same formula using an MA3 and check I mean, an MA12. If you were to do this using an MA12 forecast, you could check your numbers. Not an MA1, an MA12. So if you do an MA12 and check your numbers, I don't know what your mean error would be, but your mean absolute error would be 32.25. Your root mean squared error would be 39.55. And your mean absolute percentage error would be 6.89%. So in comparison here, which forecast tracked the original data better? We can see that the errors, mean absolute error, root mean squared error, and mean absolute percentage error are all lower for the MA3 than they are for the MA12. That tells us that based on historical data, the MA3 tracked the data better and provided a better historical forecast. Is that going to mean that it's going to provide a better future forecast? We can't necessarily say. So we will often try to choose the forecast that has the smallest errors and use that in the future. Um, but we still have to always remember that the past, while sometimes indicative of the future, doesn't always predict it exactly. All right, happy calculating. Let me know if you have any questions.